All right, this podcast is going to go over how to use TFTP to save your router config. I've basically taken our little sample network uh, and I put a TFTP server on it. Here's my server, it's at 10.1.1.3. So you may wanna make sure you have IP connectivity before you start and you do that by pinging the router from the server or pinging the server from the router. So once you have your TFTP server, uh, connect to the network. In our case, in the lab, we'll be using the TFTP server software on the PC, the Windows PC, so make sure you have that opened and configured properly. And we'll, we'll basically tell our router to copy the running config to the TFTP server. So the way we can do that is copy run TFTP. And that'll ask us for the name or IP address of the server. I just told you it's 10.1.1.3. Destination file name, it puts the host name dash config. You can put a different name in there if you want, if you want to accept what, what it suggests. You hit enter and it copies. So it says, okay, copied. So that copied the config over. So if you go look at the TFTP server, you should have your router config. So there's my router config. So that copies it over, uh, pretty simple. The difficulty comes in when you want to restore the router config. And that's because in order to restore the router config, the easiest way to, to make it so we can understand how it works is to configure our router to have an IP address. So if I look at uh, my router config right now, I have, IP, I have these IP addresses associated with it. Uh, so if I want to restore my router config, I need to do uh, a small amount of configuration uh, on my router uh, if I want to restore it from a, a, uh, a, a uh, unconfigured state. So I don't have a startup config. So if I reload my router, it's going to come up with a no config, hopefully. So let's, let's reload the router, and then once it comes up, we'll go through the steps we need to perform to be able to, to connect uh, to the TFTP server and get our config back. So, so right now my router is up. It has no config. If I look, I have no IP addresses. So... Uh, obviously I can't ping the router, uh, the TFTP server, because I don't have anything connected. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. One is you can do the first part of the config you need to do uh, to get it back to normal. And what I mean by that is we need to go into the FA01, right, do a no shutdown. Then we need to configure our, our two sub interface. We need to give an IP address. So now we've done the very basic config uh, of that interface for this router. So hopefully we should have an IP address now and we should be able to ping uh, that IP address, that, that host. So yeah, so we were able to ping the TFTP server. So actually, that didn't take very long. I was about to tell you some other ways you could do it, but that actually was pretty pretty quick and simple. So now you can do copy TFTP start. And what this is going to do is it's going to copy the, the TFTP to the startup config, uh, and that will cause it for uh, us to, re when we reload, reload the router, reload the router, it will load the startup config, and our router will be in the, in the known good state. Another thing you might be thinking is like, hey Rich, why don't we do copy TFTP run? And we can do that, and in this case, it's gonna work fine uh, because our config is gonna match exactly what we've configured so far, so we won't have any issues. But you don't get consistent results, or I shouldn't say, you have to, you have to be very careful when you copy into the running config because uh, it merges the two configs. It doesn't override it. It, it kind of merges the two configs. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do it the, the, the better way. Copy it to the startup config, and we're going to tell it the IP of the TFTP server, and the source file name, I believe, was router config. Verify that router dash config. Notice there's no I in config. I guess they thought it's better to save a character and confuse the crap out of everybody. So there's no I in config. So we'll tell it the router config, config, right? And we want to save it to the startup config, so we'll hit enter. And it copied it over. So now if we do show start, 
our startup config has our entire config back. If we do show run, you see we still don't have the entire config back. So now we will reload the router. And this time when we reload, it should load the startup config, which should put our config that we just copied over back in place. And that should be how we can use TFTP to pretty quickly get up to speed and get our server, our server, our router configured back to where we were last week. So if we look now, I have my uh, TFTP server, uh, my config for my TFTP server loaded on my router. And that took like, I don't know, I'm thinking less than five minutes. So uh, that's that. You may be wondering why don't we use TFTP for our hosts, uh, not our host, our switch config. And you could. Uh, I don't generally say for you guys to do that because a switch config is pretty simple. But in order to do that, we have to configure uh, we have to configure a, an interface on our switch. So I'll go ahead and, and hope this works. Configure the interface, give it an IP address. Uh, I don't know if we need to do no shutdown, but we will for fun because it's always fun to do no shutdown. Looks like that was required. So hopefully we can ping the TFTP server. Hopefully we can ping the TFTP server. All right, so that didn't work. You know why that didn't work? I didn't think that was going to work uh, because our TFTP server is in VLAN 2. And we don't actually have a VLAN 1. So if we had a VLAN 1, if we had a VLAN 1, our router would be able to route our packets to the TFTP server, but we don't. So we're going to configure an interface uh, for VLAN 2. That's not the right IPs. Set it changed to set it changed to up, but let's go ahead and do no shutdown again for fun, just because I love doing no shutdown. All right, so now I can ping it. So uh, now if I do copy run run TFTP if I look at my TFTP server now I have a switch config it's the same thing over here I have no startup config so if I reload it if I reload it then it's going to reload and come up with an empty config. So it reloads and comes with an empty config, so we have to configure some number of things to make it work. Uh, primarily we need to configure we need to configure the interface that the uh, server is plugged into. I guess capital letters are cool, whatever. We need to put that port in the right VLAN. I'm going to go ahead and do spanning tree, port fast on that port so it comes up quickly. And we need to reconfigure the VLAN 2 interface. I gave it four. And uh, is that it? Yeah, so now I can ping it. So now I can uh, copy my switch config back over. Again, I'm going to copy to the startup config. It's called switch dash config. Startup config. If 
I do show start. I have the startup config. So now if I reload, if I reload, it should come back up with the startup config. And it comes up with the right config. So now if I go back over here to my host, everything should be everything should be good now. That's still doing spanning tree. Once that port goes uh, green, it should be good. And we're gonna sit here and wait for it just because I like to prove that things work. Hey, look at that, it works. So now, now we're good. So that is how you can use TFTP uh, to get your router config and switch config back on, including some extra troubleshooting steps for what might happen if you configure VLAN 1 on your switch and you don't ha actually have a VLAN 1 that's accessible uh, on the network. So that's why we had to use VLAN 2.